the pieces that we need to build a birdhouse. The lumber that I use is rough cut, and so it's a little wider and thicker than lumber that you would buy it at the lumber yard. The plans are for lumber that you buy at the lumber yard, and then everything fits together perfectly without ripping. The lumber that I use, being rough cut, it's a little too wide, so I have to rip both the ends, or the sides, I should say, and the bottom to five and a half inches. The fronts and the backs are wider, but it doesn't matter, as you will see as we go along with the project. This is uh, pine. Pine lumber works really well for building birdhouses. It's soft and it's less prone to splitting when you pound nails into it than is fir or larch. If you were to use fir or larch lumber, then you could do some pre-drilling, meaning drilling holes where you're gonna put the nails to reduce the chance of splitting. So the way that I start to build my houses is I start with the back, the bottom, and the fixed side. One side pivots to open to clean, the other side is fixed. Yeah, the fixed side is all nailed completely into place and it doesn't, doesn't move. It becomes a structural part of the box. So we'll set aside the roof and the front and one of the sides for now. So the way I start out is with the fixed side the back and the bottom. Yeah, I'm using the bottom just temporarily to hold the back in place while I while I nail it together. This is where if if you're not a proficient nailer, where it would pay to pre-drill holes to put those nails in, especially because it all wants to fall apart being floppy at the moment. Because I've pounded 10 million nails in my life, I usually don't pre-drill. I position the back so that there's room for the back to stick up above the front for attachment purposes. Helps to have a nice dirty table. Now, the side is well attached, three nails. Now I set the bottom in place. I just sort of eyeball it, get it approximately square, and put in one nail along close to the edge to the side. And now I can look at it to make sure that it's square this way and then I nail it with a couple of more nails then I'll attach the, this fixed side to the bottom because it's offset there it's awkward to do it like that so I put it to the edge of the table and hold it there with my belly there that's a good start to our box. And next I put on the front. The front has an inch and nine sixteenths hole. The size of the hole is important. If the hole is too big, then other undesirable birds will want to get in the birdhouse. Like for example, starlings. These pieces are bevel cut as according to our plan at about a 15 degree angle so that the roof will fit nicely there. So I line that up. Everything doesn't have to be perfect and square because the birds don't care. I like to use nails rather than screws because screws tend to split the wood more than nails do. They're kind of fatter and being so pointy on the end they just 
part the, the grain of the wood and tend to split more. These galvanized nails don't seem to work their way out of the wood much at all. Now we're ready for our pivot side. We're going to put this side here. We're going to leave a space here, approximately a quarter of an inch, for ventilation. Cross ventilation through the hole in there, just kind of let some air move around in there. This piece usually needs a little persuasion to get into place. You can tell when it's square when it is up against the, the bottom there really well. Now we're going to drill a hole for the pivot nail. It's important to have the two pivot nails square with each other, otherwise it makes the door real hard to open up later on. So I use my square and line it up with this and make a mark over here so I can get the pivot nail in the same spot that I need to pre-drill that. see if it works. It's a little tight because everything is so new. This will all loosen up over time after the birdhouse has been out in the field. So it's real stiff right now, but just to demonstrate that's how it will open up for purposes of cleaning later on by having this ventilation space allows room for movement of the side to clear the, the roof which we will be attaching next. So there, it's taken shape. You can see our ventilation spot here. The 15 degree angle makes a pretty good seal here. Seals pretty good there. So again, if you have trouble pounding these nails, feel free to drill some pilot holes through, through these in the appropriate places and make it easier for you to pound the nails. I nail the two opposite corners first because that keeps it, that positions it right where it needs to be and then I can nail the other pieces without holding it all together. I typically put four nails across the front. The roof is the most vulnerable part of the birdhouse because it's subject to the weather more than the rest of it. You have to remember not to put any nails into our pivot side. See I'm nailing the back to the roof it may seem like an awful lot of nails, but by nailing all the parts to each other, it makes it really strong. And there we have our box. All that's left is a few more holes. So to hold the pivot side in place, I have a bunch of these uh, duplex nails you can use any kind of nail for this process. I just happen to have a whole bunch of these that I got for free. I'm going to use a larger drill bit. The ones that I use for the pivot, quite a bit smaller. The larger one is because it doesn't have to hold anything together. This is just to accommodate this nail to hold the side in place. So I'm going to start vertically and then I'm going to go at an angle.
there it is. I usually give it a, a couple of taps so that it doesn't fall out during transportation. This duplex nail, this old, its sole purpose is to hold the pivot door closed. As time goes by and things weather and the boards warp a little bit, things can get kind of loose. So we always have to be sure that this nail is well in place after cleaning the birdhouse so that the door doesn't wind up gaping open. Then I drill a few more holes to make it easier to mount the birdhouse. All these holes don't mean that you have to put a fastener in each hole. They're just to accommodate the varying conditions in the field to mount the box. So there you have it, an Okanagan birdhouse. The boxes can be mounted on top of a fence post, on the side of the fence post, sticking up above the fence post. They can be mounted to T-posts by using wire through these holes, or you can make more holes if you might find a, that a, more useful to your application. So sometimes, if I want to mount this on top of a post, like this is the top of a post, and I want to mount it like that on the post. And you can get a, a couple of screws in down here, but it may seem a little wobbly still. So what I do then is I open up the box, Put it back here on our pretend fence post and I take my screw gun with the proper tip on it and just screw a screw in through the bottom into the top of the fence post and then it's firmly attached. For general mounting of the birdhouses, I always use screws and the reason for that is Sometimes you need to move the birdhouse and if it's nailed up, you're going to break the birdhouse trying to pry it apart. If you use screws to screw it up there, no problem. You can take the birdhouse down without damaging and move it to a better spot. So we, we built these birdhouses primarily for bluebirds, but we have a lot of swallows and they are cavity nesters too. We have tree swallows and violet green swallows that will use these boxes. We love the swallows because they love to eat mosquitoes. So a lot of times there's competition between swallows and bluebirds for these cavities. If you find that happening in your situation, you can mount two birdhouses close to each other, like six to 20 feet apart. Swallows are more aggressive than bluebirds. Bluebirds don't like to nest anywhere near another bluebird. So by having two boxes, the swallows can get one, and the bluebirds can get one. Ultimately, the bluebirds benefit greatly from this association because the swallows are more aggressive in defending their boxes, and they bring their aunts and uncles and everybody else to help deter predators, nest box predators like squirrels and chipmunks and what have you. You never want to mount a perch on a bluebird house because it just gives a place for uh, a predator bird to sit 
to harass the bluebirds that are in the boxes. It's not necessary to have a perch. Additionally, if you want to paint your birdhouses, don't paint the area around the hole because birds wind up pecking and enlarging the hole sometimes and, and we don't want them ingesting paint. So if you've seen, it's pretty easy to build a bluebird house. And as we know, not just bluebirds use them, but we have swallows, we have wrens, and we have chickadees that use the boxes too. And I've also actually found flying squirrels in boxes that are close to the forest. So whether you have just a yard or some acreage, you can put up bluebird houses and make a difference in the world. Look out your window and you see bluebirds coming and going from the box that you built and put out there. That's sure to put a smile on your face. So as you can see, there's a lot of reasons to build bird houses and put them up there. I've done it for 30, 30 or more years because of the birds. I do it for the birds. They need our help. People all over the country have put up bluebird boxes, bluebird trails from coast to coast. And I'm just another participant in doing that. So, for the birds, build some bird houses, give them to your friends, and tell them what I tell them. Here's a bird house. I'm giving it to the birds. You just get to put it up and maintain it, but it's for the birds.